Hi, Jason. It's so great to see you again. We're so pleased to have you join us for our In a Minute series. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Something that I notice when I look at um, the video that our friends are about to see uh, is the incredibly complicated movement um, in which each dancer is involved. So I'm wondering uh, what is the approach that the company takes to rehearsing and how do you um, learn these very complicated body rhythms? For instance, do you have a notation? We don't have a written notation. We name every single step, but we usually name them like a song for whatever reason. <laughs> they, the names are coming from everywhere. We have one called Hot Butt. We have Shake It Fast. <laughs> we have, so the names are just really just whatever we keep picking from our head. But um, when I start teaching, like if I were to teach a residency to somebody who has never learned it before, high schoolers, college students, um, I usually teach patterns that you can repeat. An example, I call it just a body roll. I would go right, left, right, left, right, left, clap. Right, right. left, right, left, right, left, clap. Yeah, da, 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 da. So you can put it inside of any rhythm, but da, 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 da. You know, just like an athlete, you put it in your body and you make it muscle memory. So you're not thinking about the rhythm itself. You're thinking about the song and you're trying to stay on tempo, you know, with the rest of the ensemble. So if we start with a good base of these are triplets, these are what triplets feel like in your body. I'm interested in, in something. Are all of your dancers as musically literate as you are? You talk about a detail like triplets. Yeah, uh, a lot of the people who come in are dancers first. Um, they make studio dance, you know, like contemporary, modern ballet, um, African hip hop. We start with a whole fundamental base of, you know, these different patterns, these different styles. We, we teach them how to keep their feet into the floor and grounded because most people are up on their toes or they're up, 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 up and gliding. Mm -hmm. We're like, down, down. <laughs> we got to get the sound out of the floor. We're teaching them how to be, how to use their body as a percussive instrument and the, the floor as the drum itself, you know? Some people, you know, if, especially if they've tapped or done some hoofing or any type of flamenco, they do have that groundedness in their body already. So I know that um, long before Step Africa, uh, when you were a student, you became involved with uh, creating a rhythmic dance club at your college. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I went to the University of New Mexico and at the at UNM, there were no black fraternities or sororities. I had seen stepping, I had seen the Divine Nine, um, five oh. black fraternities, four black sororities, oh. performing yeah, yeah. together in a unity step on TV, the NAACP yeah. Awards. I recorded that and I stole everything I could. <laughs> I learned every movement that they did. I rewound it because back then it was VHS. So you had to rewind. And I started a step team at my high school. But then at college, pretty much the same thing. It was a non-Greek uh, chartered organization that we called Rhythm Cartel. What it did, I think, uh, just in terms of, you know, how culture develops, when you don't have the full structure right there and somebody teaching you exactly what it is and how, you know, we, we got a little bit more creative with it. So even in my very beginnings, you know, I, I saw what stepping was. I saw it from a videotape. And then later, of course, being um, honed and trained with Step Africa and touring the world with them. And they are official. They are Black fraternity sorority. But my original introduction to it was from seeing it on TV and then experimenting it with, with it in my body. And then we created our group with this open mindset, you know, that wasn't so rigid to exactly what in a traditional step show might look like. I, I have a personal question to ask you because as I listen to you today, I'm struck by not only your creativity, but your passion for being an entrepreneur and for founding and starting a new something that wasn't there before. Is that in your DNA? Is that self-taught? When I saw stepping, I think it was stepping itself, uh, that I just saw the power of humans with nothing, you, with no instruments, with no, 
you know, knee pads with no helmets, no nothing. You didn't need anything. And I just saw that power of what humans can do, you know, and then the power of rhythm itself, you know, that's what attracted me. Um, and so I just, wherever I am, or wherever I go, it's like, I want to recreate that. I want, <laughs> I want it again. I want it more. You know, obviously it's, it's accessible to schools. All we just need is an open space that we can practice. We don't need anything. So I, I think it's just a gift that we can continue to teach and pass on, you know, to everybody. So I think that inspires me as well, you know? Well, your energy uh, and passion are palpable. We can't wait to work with you again in person. And in the meantime, we send you all our love. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I can't wait to work with you again. We want, we have so much new stuff and we want to share it and get it out. So post can't wait. <laughs> Thank you.